शब्द बिना सारा जग अंदा काटे कौन मोका फंदा शब्द बिना सारा जग अंदा काटे कौन मोका फंदा शब्द बिना बेर था सब तंदा शब्द बिना बेर था सब तंदा शब्द बिना जीव बंधन बंदा शब्द बिना जीव बंधन बंदा Welcome seekers to today's spiritual satsang. Title: The Truth About the Mind. Subtitle: The Concept of Free Will or Choices and Our Human Predicament. I have with me is the Asia's main speaker, who is an advanced disciple of a perfect living master. This is the final recording of our August satsang and is a continuation of the previous one. So let's move on to the next topic which is the mind. So there are several questions here put out by the seekers. So let me just go one by one. Okay. Um number 1 Does the mind mean measuring? Such as we will think about the goodness or badness of something when we make some decision making. Yes, the mind is like the computer. It also always justifying things all the time. It always, you know, try to analyze according to the data or the information given at that time. So the mind will be, you know, just like the computer, you know, try to analyze, dissecting things all the time. Um the next question I'm I'm going to paraphrase this question a bit so it sounds uh more clear. I think what okay. the what the seeker is trying to say is why does our mind have multiple channels every day and every mm. moment. So it means that there's there's many different chatter going on in your head, right? <laughs> does this mean that our soul cannot be calm? when we have multiple voices in our going on in our head, multiple conversations right yeah as i said to uh, to you in the sutra in the beginning according to spiritual scientists then they um they they said that the mind has four levels right from conscious mind subconscious mind unconscious mind and super conscious mind So yes, all of that. When you meditate, you come into contact with them, and one by one, they will chatting to you. Sometimes just different um, topics, even sometimes just one topic, but different comments. <laughs> mm. And uh, because it's like you know, like a conscious mind, subconscious mind. unconscious mind and super conscious mind they have different intelligence with them so one is more clever than the other but it's all the mind just like you you live with most dumb dumb person stupid person and then the most intelligent one in one and they are talking in your head you understand mm. so therefore you know the super consciousness will be the most intelligent one They like a professor in your head, mm. right? We say all the intelligent things. So, when we practice, we will uh, start to raise above the stupid mind, right? The most like a stupid level, you know, also called like instinct, like close to animal instinct, to the 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 higher mind. 
So we will rise above that until we reach the level of super conscious mind. Then that super conscious mind is the mind that closest to the soul. Because the power of the soul touch directly to the super conscious mind. So this mind is really powerful. You know, it can destroy you or it can build you up on uh, how much you, you know, you train this mind. And if you um, try to program the super consciousness to be always a noble, uh, noble human being, kind person, compassionate or loving person, then the mind will remember those quality of the soul and always make decisions upon the quality of the soul. So yes, uh, mind tend to have different channels, but you can train to, you know, to use the best channel for you, which is super consciousness that you can use. And this super consciousness can happen in waking time, sleeping time, eating time, busy time. You know, it's there every time, unlike unconscious mind, unlike subconscious mind. Unlike the conscious mind, you understand that's why it's called super consciousness. So therefore, all the mindfulness part that lower than the part of the soul, that's their goal, you know, to train their mind to to this super consciousness level. But the thing is that when you train the super consciousness um, level, the more you train, the more you invest time to that, the more of your ego grows. Like I said, it's like a very clever professor. Mm. So when it's um, very intelligent like that, it just, you know, build up very strong identity and it's very hard to let go. So therefore, all of my students, people, if they not uh, seek something uh, beyond that, they always trap. You know, mm. you go into the highest point of the mind, then when your spiritual merit runs out, you come back, reborn into the stupid one in the creation again. So, my suggestion is that when you... Um, reach that super conscious that mind, please seek something further, something higher, which is the soul. And the part of the soul only can be found on the part of the master, the part of a perfect living master. When you seek something higher, you know, with the soul, because the soul is the one who empowering the mind, when you are in touch with the soul, you will come to understand that the mind is not the most important um, identity here. The soul is more important because the soul is the source of the power. Without the soul, the mind can do nothing. It cannot be great without the soul. And when you tap and you tap into the soul the more the mind even the super conscious mind will lose its own identity and become part of the whole and this part of the whole Ishwapuriji he calls totality of consciousness the almighty the god Satguru or anami Kurush any name that you call for the highest power that create the whole creation. Why okay. is the mind always negative? Does it mean that our uh, our ourself? I mean, does it mean that uh, the mind is projecting our negative thoughts? That's why it's so negative. Or how does how does this relate to each other? Right. 
The mind is just like a robot. And this robot has no love because it doesn't have heart. Because the love is come from the soul. So when the mind analyzes things, it's always, you know, giving information without consideration or compassion, kindness, or love. So imagine if somebody uh, lacking of love, compassion, kindness in their life, how they're going to be? They're going to be a terrible person, isn't it? So they're going to be like a heartless person, isn't it? So yes, the mind is like that. The mind on its own, without the soul quality in it, is always very judgmental, very negative, easily go to into the negative mode, right? And, you know, and have no, no heart. I would say, yes, it's, it's like that. It's like a person with intelligence, but have no love. As our mind often is affected by our surroundings, our friends, our, our elders' uh, suggestions, you know, um, does it mean that the mind can produce different sets of karma based on, you know, the surroundings and and our interactions with other other people. Mm. No, actually, what is outside in our day-to-day life is actually protect from us, from our need and desire in the past. Like maybe in the last lifetime, you want to be a successful businessman with a loving family. So as you cannot fulfill that fully in the last lifetime, then you come back with the same set of mind, you know, same set of requests. And then you born again. And in this lifetime, you're being a successful businessman with a loving family. So whatever happened in your environment right now, that you take note, that you're being aware, it's all project from your mind. Just like a uh, master, Ishwar Puriji, he said, we see this life from the protector behind us. The protector is come from the wisdom eye center. Protect outside, like, you know, like shadow. So now, let's say if um, our life right now is on a movie screen, it's like a shadow moving and it's not real. Because the real um, essence, you know, where it begins, it begins from inside. So be careful of whatever you wish for. Be careful of what you pray for. Because it's go into the record of new karma. And it has to happen. It's like I started saying that if you throw the rock, right, on maybe out of this universe, one day it will come back to you. It's a cycle, you know, here. If the mind is basing the experience on the current situation at hand, right, does it mean that it's a temporary thing, an illusion? Can you can you repeat the question again? Okay, the, the question is... It's kind of vague, but I'm trying to guess. The The questioner is asking whether the mind, basing mm-hmm. the experience of the current situation, that means whatever is in front, does it also mm-hmm. mean that the mind is a temporary thing? And because the, the experience is an illusion, does it mean that the mind is also a temporary uh, creation, per se? Yes, the mind... Is temporarily, but it's less temporarily as the temporarily physical thing here. Because thing here is have its own life, right? For example, if you buy one computer, then you can use it, let's say for a decade, for 10 years, and it's finished, right? But your mind lives on. 
the mind that you carry within this physical body can live up to three million years. So the mind, yes, it can die uh, and and reborn again, but the mind actually living longer is temporarily, but it's also living longer than all the physical things, all these uh, emotional things. It lives longer because of its uh, lifetime like that. But what is live forever is the soul. So if you really seek eternal, you know, you you really want to live immortal life, you have to be the soul. Because the soul is immortal. It uh, operates above time and space and limitation. Mm -hmm. And the soul is all-powerful. So if you want to be somebody that is most powerful in this whole universe, you don't need to be a superhero. You have to be the soul, which you already are, but you have to re rediscover that because it's hidden inside yourself. And the more you go in inside, you know, at your wisdom eye center, then you will rediscover more about your real self that's hidden inside as the soul. Okay, speaking about the soul, um, if we do something without thinking, meaning without using the mind, just by intuition, does this mm -hmm. mean that it comes from our soul and not the mind? Yes. Mostly the case of intuition is come from uh, the soul. Intuition takes no time. But if it's the mind, like I said to you, the mind, the nature of the mind is to analyze things, to dissect things, right? To uh, think about the problem and solution. And if that solution that you think of comes instantly, like it just um, happened inside you, yeah? Just like a moment of enlightenment. So that intuition from the soul. Um, on the same topic, if we do things by our intuition more and more every day and we feel very comfortable uh, of doing, of, of behaving this way every day, does it mean that our mind has gone away or our mind is getting along well with our soul? Yes, if you try to live in God's will, if you try to go with the flow, Yes, you mostly using your intuition, you know, in your daily life. Then yes, the mind will get less control over your life. The mind will get more convinced that oh, that actually is higher power than the mind, because the mind see that whatever it do, it cannot control everything. So therefore, the person that lives more on intuition will have more miracles happen in their life. Why? Why we call it miracle? Because miracle is something that the mind cannot explain. The mind does not know, right? So therefore, yes, it's the best way to live in this planet by using intuition factor of the soul. Because you live in miracle, you witness miraculous life while living a, no, a normal human being life. But it doesn't mean that the mind is going away or dying, you know? Mm. The mind is still there in the background, but the mind not try not be in charge. The mind just let the soul be in charge more of your life, your decisions. The next question, once we reach the soul level, I think I think the, the seeker mentioned we as in uh, the experience uh, reaches the soul mm. level. How will mm -hmm. then the mind work for us as it won't struggle with the soul? 
then how does it work? Right. At that time, the mind will be at the level of super conscious mind because it is the function of the mind that closes to the soul. So therefore, if the professor, right, let's say the very intelligent mind is a professor, if this professor surrender to director, yeah, so let the soul be the director of life and the professor obey and using the intelligence of the professor, the intelligence of the mind to operate in everything. So you can imagine that, you know, that person, how he gonna uh, make this world more at once, right? Mm. Because he has the power of the soul supporting him and he's doing the right thing and he's using his intelligence in the right way. So yes, if the mind being convinced with the higher power, you know, with, uh, and accept that as the leader, then the mind will work day and night, really devoted to that one. Master said to us that being on the higher soul part, the part of the master, the secret is love and devotion. Love is come from the soul and devotion is come from the mind. So when you um, operate like that, like uh, the soul, you know, be in charge and the mind is the one who follow it, then you can witness miracles that happen around you. Everything that you want to do will work. Everything you need will come to you. It's actually living a um, wonderful life. You know, not miserable life. That everybody understand that, oh, you are a spiritual practitioner. You must be a very depressing person. No. On the higher part of the soul part, the more you active the soul quality inside you and the soul become more dominant, become the leader of your mind, the more you will feel happy, satisfied, because everything will come to you. You know, whatever you want will happen with the right set of mind, with the noble thinking as well. Next question. Why has the mind been introduced to work on our body from the very beginning of our life? What's the point of empowering the mind instead of letting the soul do the work? Because, you know, uh, when we depart from our Creator Father, we want to understand what it's like to be ungodly. That's why the mind has been created as the separate entity from God, separate from the soul. Only because you have the mind, then you can recognize that, oh, I am. I am different than you and you different than me. You understand? Hmm. Like you are good, I am bad. I am good and you are bad. Because we have this mind, then we can just define who is who. Actually, when we enjoy the character and the creation better, because we have the mind, then you can recognize, oh, that is the hero. This is a villain, right? This is the right thing to do. This is the wrong thing to do then, you know, the play become more colorful suddenly because of this mind. But because you incarnate, you know, so long in this creation, since the time of the memorial, you forget the soul. You just train the mind to be more and more and more powerful because the nature of the mind is looking out, like what next, right? What I can know more. 
right? What I can control more. So, because we are like that, then God, the Creator, seeing that, oh, okay, if we carry on, you know, all the poor soul will never go back home. We'll never go back to the heavenly uh, father home. That's why the Creator creates a perfect living master in the human form. Send those living master in a human form here with the God consciousness, like the power of the soul fully awakened in them while they're using their mind. So they come to us and tell us that, do you want to be superhuman? We can do it together. I will show you how to be superhuman, but not um, physical superhuman. But you can be super in your mind. You can be super when you know where you're coming from. You know, you can be superhero when you tap into this uh, soul element that's inside you. I can show you how. I can be your friend. And in between, if you struggle, you cannot do it. You can come and seek help, you know, with me. Because I have direct connection with the Father, like Jesus said, right? That he, he is the son of the God, right? Mm-hmm. And, and um, people can go through him, you know, to connect with God. That's why he's saying that. But it's not only Jesus that has that capacity. We have that in every one of us. But we just not, you know, be aware of that yet. Until somebody that um, has that soul consciousness comes in our life and telling us that, you know, it's actually possible to uh, operate from the soul level, you know, to be eternally happy, raised above all of the suffering of the mind. Because you operate in the mind, then you take this suffering to be real. Then you cry. Then you be miserable. Then you broken down. Because you very much operate in the mind. But there's another way. You can be human, but operate from the soul level. You can be happy all the time with no reason. Right? You can have direct God contact. You know, and you can be uh, all powerful and also rediscover the greatness that you carry with you inside. Uh, this is with regards, this question I think is with regards to reincarnation. Mm-hmm. How can the mind carry its memory across multiple uh, reincarnations, right? Uh, because we all know that we, f- we will forget everything when we start a new life each time. Mm-hmm. Um, in the mind, in the mind level, on the top of the causal level, there's um, a Kajik record, which is like a, a pattern of the story that um, that's floating like a crown in the sky. A card means sky, right? Yes. So therefore, a Kajik record is the mm, memory that written on the sky. So when we reach that level, we will come to know that everything, every thought, you know, every comic pattern is already written and contained in that particular sky. Because it's the top of the mind beyond, right? So therefore, it's like a brain. Let's say it's a brain of your mind. Mm -hmm. And your mind has its own body. And this body of the mind lives for 3 million years. So therefore, a Kajik record is like a memory. It's like a brain of that mind body that you can have access to. 
But because um, in humans, we have limitation, we can't remember everything. If you're not awakened to the super consciousness, you still just using your consciousness, your awareness of human beings in day to day life to operate, then you will only remember your own immediate story, your memory of this lifetime. But if you transcend higher and higher, let's say you go into the subconsciousness, you go into the conscious, uh, unconsciousness, and you go into the super consciousness, then the capacity of memory of remember past life or even future life will open up to you, open up more and more, bigger and bigger, you know, and ultimately, at the super consciousness, you will actually remember everything that's supposed to happen within the three million years of that mind. Okay, so the last question for today's uh, question and answer, um, I think this is uh, very suitable for the last question. Is the mind the biggest obstacle for seeking truth? Yes, it can be a big obstacle. If you uh, have ego there, you build up the ego character for countless of lifetime. And, and when the mind is in charge of everything, it wouldn't want to let go its authority over the astral body, over the causal body, over the physical body. Because the mind can't be the beyond, right? Somebody in the lower level cannot see somebody in the higher level. Is that right? Yes. So, from the, uh, the soul level, it's like an extra soul of the mind. So the mind very scared of stepping into the soul level soul because it feels like I will die, right? I will lose my identity. Why? I want to destroy my identity that I have been collecting for millions of years. Why I want to do suicidal act like that? Because it's, you know, lack of the capacity to understand what is beyond, right? So sometimes that's a one story of uh, Ishvapuri's father, he meditates because he heard a uh, master saying that, okay, we should uh, try to die while we're living. So he tried to imitate that in his uh, meditation. You know, he withdraw his consciousness from the eye center to the next level. So when he reached a certain point, then there's a fear kicking in, you know, the fear of dying. And that fear is actually come from the mind. And he just gets very frightened. He jumped out of the meditation and he said, this thing is killing you, right? This meditation is very dangerous. So he ran back to great master, asking master, why you suggest us to die while living? Why you suggest us to do this kind of meditation? It's killing you. Master said, look, you know, meditation never kills anyone. You only rehearse, you know, the feeling when you die. And therefore, when you withdraw consciousness, it's normal that you will have this feeling of fear. And the fear is not from your soul. It's not from your true identity. It's from the mind. It's because the mind doesn't want to lose its own identity and ignorance of what to come. So it produces that kind of fear. And the great master suggests that you know, he should uh, continue to meditate. And yet, just like every one of us, when we on this serious uh, part of the soul, part of the master, 
we will one day encounter this feeling in our meditation when you want to raise above this karmic realm the mind will try every way to stop you because it doesn't want to die it's like somebody you know like very struggle you they can't let go when when their time of dying you know so they die very gruesomely so the mind in some case if the identity is very strong so it will produce that kind of immense fear as if you being slaughter in meditation but my advice is that as great master said just try to progress slowly only because you have to convince your mind that the soul is good the soul is love the soul is compassion and the soul is all powerful and it creates miraculous life for you right if you operate from the soul level so when the master will try to put small coincidences in your life small miracle like okay oh i can fly parking today master thank you very much oh i want to go there all right i don't have to wait in the queue right or oh i will be late for my plane but actually when i arrive at the plane i realize that the flight is delayed so all of that will be the small tiny miracle put here and there just to show you that there's something higher there's something more powerful than your own mind which is the soul and when you fully convince of uh, the soul power then the mind will stop um stop fighting stop um struggling you know stop that kind of fear then at that time you will come fully in touch with the truth just like me just like me i'm not different than all of you i'm here speaking the truth from the master only because you know i have been in the past warrior you know i fight with my mind a lot you know <laughs> and i would say that it's a great fight because at the end of the day i make the soul win right and when the soul win now i live the most wonderful life that human being can live on this planet you know if you think that okay i have to be queen of england in order to be happy i have to be the president of america in order to be happy for me i would say that i as i am nobody here but i have the most happiness that a person in this in this planet can ever have only because i read this copper my own self the soul you know the um the soul that is like the god inside myself so um i raise above all of this illusion and i actually enjoy going through this illusion i actually enjoy my own suffering can you believe that when the suffering come then i feel like okay come on right let's uh, deal with this case because i know that if i pass this um suffering or challenge circumstance that come to me then if i make a good decision i exercise my own free will in the right way that is a uh, create spiritual merit for myself then it's kind of reward that i can see it's like you know every obstacle every hard work that come into your way and if you see from the bigger picture you wait for reward you know you're looking forward for reward and now a day i see like all the suffering 
is a blessing in disguise because it makes me evolving more, more and more in my own self, in every level. Evolving in my own physical body, I know how to take good care of myself because I know that it's very important as the temple to find God inside. I take care of my own emotions. I try to, you know, be in focus. I take care of my mind and convince my mind that, you know, you can live miraculous life. But you have to let go. You go with the flow, right? Then when you're doing that, you let the soul in charge. Then you live very wonderful life. Very charming life, more than anyone else in this planet, except the one that has found the same secret that I have found. And this secret is not of my own. I'm not discovered it. My master, all of my master, they are the ones who discovered it, and they told me. And I'm just being a good student, walk in their footsteps. And when I walk on their footsteps, then I discover that oh, master, this actually work. You know, a sinful human being just like me, you know, can enjoy the godliness, can enjoy being just like God on this planet, just like you. So you know, I'm forever grateful to all the masters. That initiated me, came down from the heaven, you know, from our true home, being in physical form, struggle like us, you know, just to see me, and enlighten me, and give this secret to me. So today, I'm very happy and excited to to share this secret to all of you, and hopefully. My story to inspire all of you to rediscover the secret inside all of you as well. Well, that's it for today's satsang. Thank you, main speaker, for spending time with us for this satsang. If you want more information about Easter Asia, please go to www.easterasia.com. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and email us any inquiries you have regarding spirituality. Thank you for listening. That's it for today's satsang. Thank you, main speaker, for spending time with us for this satsang. This concludes a three-part series of the August satsang. If you want more information about Easter Asia, please go to www. .eastasia.com. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and email us any inquiries you may have regarding spirituality. Thank you for listening.